So a lot of you have been asking me to do a, uh, a video where I just had two real time. So here we go. 30 minutes of me just doing the scribble technique, doing contrast, doing highlights, explaining my process on this section of this full back piece that I'm working on. So you guys better show some love to this video because you, you guys keep asking me for this. And if you don't, I swear. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, we're gonna start on this corner here. I'm using a 14 round liner with a voltage of a 5.0. And what I love about sculptures or statues is that nothing's perfect, right? Everything's chipped, everything has imperfections, which that's what makes them perfect because of those imperfections. Uh, so that's why I love doing statues. It's literally just messy everywhere. There's no clean lines. It's just having fun the whole time. There we go. Oh. And this is what I call the scribble technique. It's when you do circles, excess, O's, infinity signs, little stars. As long as you follow the the rhythm, it's very important. The dale mambo. Jump into this corner here, just uh, so I can so I can make sure that this doesn't get lost. Don't mind the shape of the uh, the stencil right now, just because its back is really stretched out, so it's stretching out uh, the piece. <laughs> so it makes like the it makes it look like the features are not are look they look off, but. Once he stands straight, that's when everything changes. But uh, in this situation, I asked him to, or he, his, his body posture is basically to stretch his skin. So it helps me out to really pack it in a lot. What I'm working on here, it is a full back piece representing uh, Mikla Tecutli, Mik Tecazual, and El Disco de la Muerte. What I'm working on right here is basically uh, El Disco de la Muerte, and it represents Mikla Tecutli. And Mikla Tecutli, it is the god of the underworld, the king, the governor of the underworld. Which, by the way, a lot of people think that the underworld is supposed to be evil, but it's not. For the Mexica culture, or Aztec culture, however you guys remember uh, the tribe. Uh, basically, for them, the underworld, it is not a bad place. What it is, is just a place where your, your soul goes to after you passed away. And it is not a bad thing. Uh, there is certain stages that you have to go through when it comes down to going to the afterlife for eternity, or if you get stuck in the middle. If you, but there is consequences, of course. Uh, either you get punished or you don't. But it's for the Aztecs or Mexicas, it's not a place to fear. Quiero dar amor y tú na que na. Yo te quiero dar amor y tú na que na. Perfect. Now that I see how bright this looks, I'm gonna tone it down a little bit more because I want it to look like it's in in the dark, like it's inside of the skull. As you can see, I'm moving pretty quick just because uh, the scribble technique allows me to move quick, less irritation, and more uh, space that I'm covering up. It's not that I'm going at a fast pace. I'm, this is my normal pace. I'm chilling, I'm relaxed. But this really allows me to move a little bit faster for sure. If you guys are not familiar with uh, the Aztec culture, there's so much to it. As many of you know, I've been studying 
the Aztec culture now for about five years or so, learning the, the culture, learning a little bit of the language, uh, trying to really understand it. Just because I love it so much, uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's no other reason. It's just I love learning about history. And it's not just the only culture I learn about, but I recently learned about the Japanese. I also learned about the Egyptians, which Egyptians is a little bit harder because there's not a lot of evidence left behind. But I still like learning uh, about the few things that uh, the culture have. So, uh, but in this case, I'm doing a, a Mexica uh, back piece, full back piece. So I will tell you guys a few things, fun facts, or I guess a little bit of the history of the Aztecs or Mexicas. If you guys don't know, the reason why they have two names, Mexicas and Aztecs, it is because uh, Mexicas is basically after the name of Mexico, which is basically what we pronounce now as Mexico. Uh, but as far as the, as far as Aztecs, that, that name comes from uh, the city that they, that they actually came from. So that, and that came years later, it's not something that they came up with out of nowhere, you know, but they basically looked at the evidence and the codices, I don't know how to say that in English, codices, with all the evidence that they left behind and it turns out because their journey started in the grand, in the beautiful city of Aztlan, they named the Mexicas Aztecs from the name Aztlan Aztecs which it becomes really interesting because that's basically where they started their journey for a hundred years. And they traveled, they say about a hundred years, so nobody really knows exactly how many years, but they said that uh, according to Diego Duran, which is one of the first people who wrote codices back in 1530 after Hernán Cortés uh, took over. So that is the closest thing we have to, to knowing more about the Aztecs, right? But, Technically, they travel for a hundred years, and uh, it's a beautiful story, you know? They change governors, they, they call Tlatuanis. So Tlatuanis are basically the, their leaders that guide them into, you know, it's basically their presidents, but they change Tlatuanis throughout the, the, the years because everybody was passing away, because it's, it's a long journey. But they basically, they, the sign that they were supposed to follow was the sign of, um, Wichilopochtli. Now, Wichilopochtli, it is the god of war. It is also the son of Huatlicue, and his sibling is Coyolxauqui. So, the sign that he gave that Latuani from the Mexicas was that there's going to be an eagle eating a snake standing on a cactus. That's basically the sign that they had to look for. Uh, and they did, they eventually did, and it was the, they found the eagle thanks to the last Latuani, his name is Tenoch. And Tenoch found the eagle standing on the, exactly like how Huichilopochtli described it, and it was in the middle of the Lake Texcoco. And it is insane because there's no land around there. There's basically nowhere that can really help them to build the whole empire. But the sign is the sign, and they started building on top of the Lake Texcoco. And yeah, that's how, and then after a while, after they finished building, um, they basically named it Tenochtitlan because of Tenoch. Tenoch was the one who found it, and Tenoch became the main reason why they named it Tenochtitlan. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, what else? So right now, as you can see, you can barely see that highlight right there in the corner. That's really going to make it stand out. Just a little bit more. Perfect. Let's go to the eye. I feel like I need the eye to really let me know how bright I can make this look. But basically, what, the, uh, what this project is based on is based on Miklatecutli uh, and Mikte, I forgot how to pronounce it Miktakesiwal Miktakesiwal oh it's such a hard name to pronounce but it is basically the wife of Miklatecutli and 
that is why now we celebrate Dia de los Muertos and we have Katrinas because it is inspired by Miklatikutli's wife. I have to really, can you, could you pull up her name please? I really have to learn how to pronounce it. Ah, it's such a hard name to pronounce. There's so many letters. I just really want to pronounce it the right way. Baby, imaginas la falta que me haces. You found it? Let me see. Ah, oh, where were uh, da, 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 da. Oh, the top. Miklatecutli y Mictecasigual. 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 Okay, there it is. Mictecasigual. So she is basically the reason why we celebrate Dia de los Muertos because she is uh, the, the one who. Th that is why uh, she believed that the soul had to come back to earth to basically see the world once a year if they were stuck between uh, eternity death for eternity or right in between life uh, I don't I don't know how to describe that I basically learned all of this in Spanish so I have a hard time translating <laughs> it's a big problem my guy <laughs> um, basically they're stuck right in the middle so that's why our souls come back when our when our um, family members remember us like exactly like the movie Coco if you guys seen the movie Coco it is pretty precise to the culture uh, so anyways uh, they actually had a son and um, the son is uh, Sipakli and it is known as the monster that looks like an alligator and it was uh, all over the, the universe just swimming all over the El Cosmo basically swimming all over the place and uh, Quetzalcoatl the feather serpent and his brother Tezcatlipoca they actually uh, fought Sipakli and they defeated the son of Miklatecutli which is Sipakli and uh, out of his body they made what we now know as Earth, which is insanely interesting. Uh, it's a long story between the, the battle that they had, but basically just a quick little summary, I guess. Uh, Tezcatlipoca, Quetzalcoatl's brother, he actually amputated his foot so he can lure, 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 how do you pronounce it? Lure, lure. Uh, Sipakli to where they were at so they can surprise him and attack them because he was so powerful there was no way they were gonna do a, a, a 1v1 because <laughs> he was gonna win he was so powerful but they defeated him uh, thanks to Tezcatlipoca and then Quetzalcoatl ended up finishing him and uh, that's how they they built the earth out of his body but it's super interesting stuff. I mean, they're very long stories. But uh, yeah, that is why uh, when you see a jaguar, it is because Tezcatlipoca is known for that. It's known for being the animal. And then Quetzalcoatl is basically the feather serpent. There's so much. I, I'd be, I'd just be jumping around because I just, I just love telling stories about it. Like I said, I've been doing research with all these archaeologists that um, have been studying it since years ago and leaving behind a lot of like evidence and a lot of like notes about their lifestyle, you know. And it's very interesting to know a lot about, it, especially because there is so concrete evidence about things that the Aztecs or the Mayans and uh, you know the Mexicas did back then they were actually very clean people too they used to bathe three times a day and they used to clean the streets every morning because 
they believe that the gods wanted them to really be clean people. You can't, you can't just greet a god every morning. After, when, as soon as the, the, before the sunrise happened, the, the streets had to be fully clean because they were afraid, not afraid, they, they didn't want to greet their god with a dirty environment. They also brushed their teeth, they knew all of the, everything that we know, they were, what is it, hygiene? Yeah, yeah, their hygiene was impeccable. Even, even, it, they were so clean that even the Spaniards, when they came, Hernán Cortés, when he came to invade, or, they, or he uh, came across the land of Mexicas, he was amazed of how clean they were. They didn't know, they didn't know any of that. They didn't know they could bathe a couple times a day. They didn't know that they can brush their teeth. But unfortunately, they also brought diseases such as, uh, how do you say viruela in English? What is it? Chicken pox. They, it's unfortunate that they brought that disease and ended up infecting a lot of them and they didn't have the cure so a lot of them died because of that. One of the reasons they were defeated amongst others. Nah, nah, nah. As you can see I'm already building a little bit of that contrast here on the bottom. And I'm using nothing but solid black. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. The reason why I'm using nothing but solid black it is because it really allows me to play around with the contrast and whenever it heals it's gonna look amazing. It's gonna stay looking dark. There is a pros and cons using this, this technique. So basically the pros is that if you know how to, how to navigate and be able to con uh, control your contrast and your highlights and not get carried away uh, it's gonna look amazing because the, the, the skin is gonna take it well. You can tattoo on any skin complexion, such as uh, African Americans, natives, um, anyone that has darker skin complexion from la, la, the Latino, Latinos, and, um, and obviously white skin complexion. So it is very, uh, yeah, it's for everybody. But if you don't know how to control your contrast and your highlights, that's when that's where you're gonna have a, a lot more cons because you won't be able to make it stand out. And there's a possibility that you might go too dark and you can come back from that. So make sure that before you try this technique that uh, you know how to control your highlights and your contrast. That you feel comfortable. You can't second guess anything. You have to be on point every time. Ah, there it is. So far, so good. Look at this, look at this texture right here. Look at how easy it goes in. With a little nice. There it is. Ella hace todo por seducirme. Yo voy, voy, voy. Lo que ella me pide. Yo voy, voy, voy. A que siempre quise. Yo voy, voy, voy. Yo voy, voy, voy. Let me know if you want more videos like this because if you do, I'll be more than happy to make more videos like this where I just talk. <laughs> Annoying us. <laughs> and I just tattoo real time for like 30 minutes. You guys, you, you better not leave me hanging for 30 minutes just talking here. <laughs> Drop a comment. Share it. What is it? I know. Bob Ross through this shit. Hell yeah. Happy little texture. Happy little texture. I'll beat the devil out of this texture. <laughs> Rest in peace. It was amazing. But if you have a statue coming up, this is going to be very great for you to use. And just watch how fast you move with really good quality it's gonna be just perfect trust trust the process i've never uploaded a, an uncut video 
So I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of like weird moments of me just breathing heavily or like <laughs> or stuttering, stuttering, stuttering. <laughs> the irony. Cuando entra en calor. But it's already, uh, I'm moving kind of quick, like I said. Considering it's a full back piece, man, the irritation is very minimum. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna start doing a little bit of that cheekbone before that time runs out, because it is 30 minutes. So before I keep going with the contrast, you already know how I'm doing it. So now how am I gonna do my light tones? So here we go, barely tapping it, very lightly, doing the scribble technique like I did at the beginning. I, I'm just doing the scribble technique throughout. I'm gonna leave a tiny little highlight between the cheekbone and this area here. So I might leave that open. But as you can see, it's going in very lightly. It's all pressure. Uh, it's all pressure, what it, yeah, that's all what it is. Uh, was using nothing but solid black. Just building layers here and there. There it is. On some areas, I'm gonna add like heavier dots just to make it look like there is some sort of like a, how would you say it? I guess like a deeper, deeper uh, part of the texture, I guess. Like if, yeah, I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> You're just gonna have to see it and uh, your eye will be able to detect what I'm trying to say. <laughs> what is it? Mm, it's more like, you know when there's a rock and there's like a, like a deeper hole into the rock? Yeah. Like, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't know. They'll figure showing, it out. Showing yeah, showing depth. There we go. That's what it is. Toma, toma. Toma, toma. Toma, toma. When you're doing this technique, it's very important to trust the process. Don't get frustrated. Trust me. Once you see the whole product, you're gonna realize everything. Because this, this texture right here is not something that looks nice as you're doing it. It looks nice when you're done. So don't expect it like, like black and gray when you're doing soft tones and you're like, yeah, that's super soft. It, you, won't, you won't see that in texture. You're gonna have to build it and trust the process. Don't start getting discouraged because it's looking a little weird. And step back. It's very important for you to step back. And I'm pretty much just using the same needle throughout the whole thing. Uh, like 14 round liner. It's basically all I'm using. If I need to do like some packing, then I'll switch it to a mag. But that's if I really need it. As in right now, I'm chilling. I got my timer going too, so I don't even know when it's gonna hit 30 minutes. <laughs> it's gonna let me know. <laughs> there it is. But this is basically how I'm executing the light tones of this corner with a lot of patience. Tiny little gap between here and the eye socket. It's like the, yeah, the cheekbone. I have to be very careful though. I don't wanna make like a solid line and make it look like too straight. Because remember this is stone, so it's not perfect. So it has to have clean uh, shapes, but also messy at the same time. So la va Boom. Nice. 
cuando sienta el boom desde el terreno. Esa me falla y se le ve todo. Eres. Alright, nice. And uh, let's see. Wiped. I want to see the whole thing. I'm going to step back really quick just to make sure that it's not too dark. That it's still all nice. Yep. So I'm going to go back in and make this area a little bit darker. Because I, uh, even though my reference is really bright, I, I would kind of want to see darker shades here. And that is very important when it comes down to this. You have to take, uh, you have to basically um, make decisions to help you really make a tattoo look better. But you cannot make decisions unless you study the concept. So I would 100% recommend for you to, one day before, don't just show up blind, you know. Study it. Study the culture. Study the concept. Get familiar with all the shades. Figure out areas that you can adjust in case it needs to be adjusted. And you're gonna be just fine. Look at that. Oof, yes. A little bit darker here, yes. But it's I love the shape that it's taking. It's really uh, giving it a personality. I'm gonna go in here, similar shade. Mm. Same thing, do like those little holes that I was talking about. <laughs> Whatever they're called. <laughs> I'm just blind here. I just, <laughs> I gotta really practice my, uh, my what is it? My this, oh my god, my, <laughs> my vocabulary, my descriptive, uh, my descriptive uh, wording. I don't know. I might have fucked it up. <laughs> this is why I cut my videos, <laughs> but it's okay. This is what they ask for. There it is. Just pretty much building it at this point. Now I'm going back to, I'm actually gonna go down here, build this little corner. As soon as my alarm goes off, we are gonna be done with this video and you guys better comment. Piensa que con otra estoy haciéndolo. And I still have a lot more to do on this back piece, so I might want to, I might do a part two of 30 minutes in a different area. But if you want to see that, you go, oh, there it is. All right, guys, well, I'm going to do part two on it. Once I'm done with this, I'll move to a different area and record another 30 minutes and post that. Maybe. <laughs> nice. I'm really happy with how far I got. I almost got the whole back done in two days, which for me was a big accomplishment. But drop a comment, let me know what part of this back piece would you like to see me tattoo for 30 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and record it and post it. So thank you so much for coming back and watching this brand new video. So if you're a tattoo artist, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you're a tattoo enthusiast, I hope you were entertained. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys on the next video. Peace.